I think people are incredibly naive to what I'm up to. So the, I think the best buy in all of vFriends were the access tokens. If this is it, I'm pumped. This is why the blockchain's profound. <laughs> this is the jam right here. So I want to give you guys as much info as I can. This is why you bought a hangout hawk. It's a big fucking fish. I think a lot of people misunderstand how valuable access is. You motherfucker! That was nasty! I, I really do believe you when you say you're just getting started. Like 100%. If you do not love losing, you lost. Heading up yeah. to uh, Milo's right now. Here with May, who I adore. Uh, we're at Milo's in Hudson Yards, about to do the Dinner Deer session, which was one of the access tokens in uh, Series 1 of friends. So let's go see how this combo goes. I might be the most ambitious and content person ever. <laughs> it's super rare. It's why I'm weird. It's why I pop. It's why I'm different. You're talking about massive contradictions. I am, if this is it, I'm pumped. It is, it is, Yet, I want to be number one of all time. Right. I don't think it's a contradiction at all. It's fun. It's just I enjoy, for the fun. I enjoy the complexity of trying. One, two, five. Dinner, dear. Yeah. I love it. All right, just getting out of the dinner here with the boys. We're kind of getting back. Super excited about the V Friends access tokens. Really looking forward to tomorrow. Big day. The Series 2 starts. We've got the video games and the bubble hockey. I'll take that back, D Rock. I love you. We'll see you later. Uno. Instagram, what's good? I'm live. No, no we're not. No, oh, we're, we're super not. live. This lovely lady came. She wanted to play some Uno. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna let people show up to the live. I'm just gonna sip my. Really? Yeah, I'm gonna just sip my coffee here. <laughs> Be friends. Uno was played. We played for an hour. Played three games. Why don't you tell the fans at home how many you won in three games? None. <laughs> Zero, zero victories for the visiting team. Three and oh, baby. Such a pleasure. Nice to meet you. Do you not play checkers? Yes, sir. Have you been practicing? Yeah, I know, I'm fine. <laughs> you played as a kid. I did, my yeah. mom and I played when we first came to America a lot. Sure. Uh, and I have really fond memories of it. When I first started working with my dad, it was a big transition period because they were still coming from DVDs and like our industries in a time. Yeah, a lot, like, a lot of niche industries yes. get stuck. That's where the opportunity is. There was no liquor store. I talk a lot about being early. Mm. My direct 10 competitors didn't build a website for two full years. Mm. You know how much of an advantage that was? Yeah. It's crazy. Hey, feel I'm in the mood for a switcher. I hit the function, hit the rose till I hit the I hit the stage and Nintendo time. Nintendo, damn. Seen an Xbox controller. No. Uh, let's start with ice hockey. What is that? This is the jam right here. I leave the city and return with my change up. Did your dad support your ideas like all the way through the business or more just later? Pretty early on, yeah. I was putting wins on the board. Okay, yeah, yeah, for sure. From day one, yeah, yeah, yeah. even at 14, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's like, sell this wine, and, and yeah, like, at lunchtime it'd like, be gone, and be yeah, like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. So like, right away, I kind of okay. got a lot of yeah, clout yeah. with him. Right. Yes, Generally my dad definitely, cash. my dad definitely yep. gave me yep. the room, but what I love about that, it was earned, because my dad wouldn't have done that if I was a Schlemiel, you know? <laughs> they wanna knock me down, but somehow I just stay up. Shaking, moving, I've been popping in my city. Well, okay. Shout 
it Say she love the way we do it, do it with me I be too turned up to ever give a fuck They been talking pennies, I need bigger bucks About to catch a flight, I need to switch it up Log, I won like nine out of ten bubble hockey games. You feel like that was right? Maybe seven out of. Couldn't quite get the shutout. But... Yeah, <laughs> and we enjoyed the games, but now I have to go to a climb meeting. See ya. They, they wanna knock me down, but somehow I just stay up. I finally figured out what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna make like one of the best PFT projects ever. Awesome. I know that sounds kind of audacious, but it's the right way to think. If you don't I, think it for yourself, <clears throat> who the fuck's gonna think it? Yeah, you're right. But I'm more like practical. You know what I mean? So. Well, I'm uncomfortably practical. Yeah. And I always think I'm gonna build the best. Thing. Yeah, I hope that's like. I don't think. I think too many people think that's a contradiction. I actually think it's the punchline. Really. I do. I think people struggle with things that seemingly on paper seem opposite when in reality it's the thing. Meaning, to your point, going out and saying I'm gonna build a business, <clears throat> that sounds outlandish. Yeah. The reality is 99% of people in the world that have ever said things like that don't mean it and it's a cover up for their insecurity but everybody who's ever done it also thought it. Yeah. Like Tom Brady really did go, I mean I hate that I keep using it. It, keeps, it pisses me it off but, up. but I know the stories and you have to use the stories you know. He really got drafted in the sixth round. He really in the first practice went up to the owner of the team and said this is gonna be the best decision of your life. That really happened. Yeah, it's a Michigan difference. Yeah, <laughs> you said. <laughs> but you know, to me, to me that's real real stuff. So I when I hear it mm -hmm. as an optimist, I'm like, yep, okay. Just did uh, the brunch bears. So there's a whole fun thing to show the utility nature of NFTs. I think a lot of people misunderstand how valuable access is, and it was important for me with BeFriends to create an access level, not just the conference, not just building out the IP from a collectible standpoint. So it's kind of fun living the access life. All right, everybody, love you. Okay, what do we got for me? Can I do a rant video? My friends, I am running around this world getting DM'd 24 seven, running into people in the street, dapping it up 24 seven in meetings, one-on-ones, groups, keynotes, DM, private, email. It's all the same game. Everyone's trying to figure out how to be fucking happy and they think it's the bag, cash, the wallet. They think it's the bag, they think it's stuff, sneakers and shit. They think it's stuff, they think it's a relationship, a validation, like a blue fucking check mark. They think it's all this outside shit. New York Times bestseller, million followers, CEO. It's all fucking bullshit. The only way you can get happy, which is what you're all asking for, is to go fucking inside with yourself. Outside validation is a zero sum game. People are gonna boo for you if they're in a bad fucking place. People are gonna cheer for you if they're in a good fucking place. That has nothing to fucking do with you and your process to get yourself happy. You wanna get happy? Start talking to yourself. Simplify shit. Make it about you, yourself, not your parents, not your plus one, not the fucking world. You with yourself, by yourself, for you. Simplify that shit. Get happy, love yourself, love your fucking self. Everybody else sucks too. Everybody else is good at other stuff too. Just love your fucking self. This is why the blockchain's profound. I could in nine years say, okay, if you have one of each of the three Beacon tickets from that original thing, mm. go here, burn them, do this happens and this happens, that's fun. Yeah. It's gameplay in perpetuity. Yeah. I don't know who has my wine. I don't know who has my sneakers, but I'll always know or can always check who owns a befriend. Yeah. And I can do things. It's cool. Yeah. It's really it's cool. It's game changing. It's game changing.
That's why I like my goes. That's why I branded mm-hmm. them mm-hmm. because I think about like watching the provenance of where they end up, and then like, do I want to do things with that? Like, it's really just fun. Still got mine. Yeah. Yeah, I bought it directly from know. you. Yeah. I, know. I just don't, you know, you, that's what's also cool. You don't have to pay attention where they go. No, of course, you lose your mind. Because I can sit down yeah. anytime and look. Yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah, really yeah. cool. I, the yeah. blockchain's amazing. Like yeah. fucking amazing. Yeah. Like fun. This is dropping series two, but we're doing bowling boa. Bunch of people bowling. I'm really excited about it. And so I'm gonna bowl my ass off. I'm not as confident. I'm a I'm an 80 to 120 bowler. Fuck! You motherfucker! Motherfucker! I know I've been dominating the games. Don't expect too much from me here, but I'll do what I can. Twitter in 2007, by 2011, people were like, oh, you did a good job four years ago. And then it was like, and it wasn't like a really great win until like eight years later. 99.9% of the world doesn't know about BeFriends today. And in 15 years, like 25% will for sure. In that Delta is like fucking insanity. People are bad at that. Everything's so condensed by the hour, by the second, by the moment. Nobody even knows what NFTs are yet. I got very lucky. I don't know if I would have known my dad if I didn't go into the family business. Like, it's almost hard for me to remember, but like, my dad had a very challenging childhood. Lost his dad at 15, never saw him. And his mom, who I knew very well, was a beacon of negativity. You know, my dad, in a lot of ways, got dramatically more positive once I came into his life. Like, I've been having kind of memories of it. Like, he progressed a lot, you know, in the 15 years I was with him every day kind of thing. So I'm very empathetic to it. My mom is such a positive energy, so I've seen both. And I was very close to my parents, so I got a real view of it. So I'm very, I feel like I'm always able to resonate with people because I've got real fucking experience on both sides of the equation. Sorry, I hurt my back. No need to apologize. It's my birthday. Happy birthday, brother. That's awesome, brother. Happy birthday. Thank you. Sorry, I'm just being in an awkward position. I'm rolling my ass. Would you remind us about the vision? Like, what is VKind? What does it mean to you that this is happening? The Deepox, the Spike Lees, the Pharrells, me included, maybe me most of all included, all of that is 7% of the vision. 93% of the vision is summer camp. That's why it's three years. I have. What people don't know about the Mount Ida crew, Iraq, Eric, and Glenn, two of the guys that are, you know, pop up in like some of the stuff, very limited content, but people know, both got kicked out of school in the first semester. I went to school with them for 12 weeks. I'm still talking to them 28 years later. By the way, back to my point, it all happened the first weekend, all of it. Right. Hmm. I knew that Discord would build a community. I can't even imagine the excitement that people are feeling right now to meet each other in real life. Yeah, family reunion vibes. 100%. Wait Wait to the third day of actually hanging out for three straight days. Now you're fully, fully in family mode. What the fuck do you think VCon 2023 looks like? I think the relationship graph with each other, VFriends with VFriends, is gonna be profound. I think people are gonna find the love of their life. Being dead fucking serious. Uh, I think people are gonna find their business partner of the future. I think people are gonna find creativity, trading partners. I believe we're an actual community in a sea of non-communities and I think it's going to be unbelievable. Please, let's make sure we protect people that have won for the first time during this era. There's a lot of people running around their friend circles right now with a little bit of like a, ha ha, told you, you were stupid, you should have listened to me and bought a board ape. Their self-identity, their self-worth is tied into the fact that they played the NFT market properly in the last year. When? 
when they lose because they're gambling and they haven't fully seen it, there'll be a big percentage of that. Some will sell, da da But when that person that I just described loses, they're gonna have a very difficult time facing their friends and family because they've been gloating. When there's a market correction and they lose, they're gonna be in a very bad emotional state and I don't want to lose any of our community to darkness, depression, unhappiness, or worse, the ultimate crime. And this has all the elements of that. The reason I'm bringing this up is I hope we start talking about things like, hey, if you're winning in NFTs, don't make fun of your non-NFT winning friends. Build them up and teach them what's good, bad, and indifferent because I see a ton of youthful energy misplaying it and I've seen this in Wall Street, I've seen this in Web 1, I've seen this in Web 2. The amount of money that's about to be lost over the next three years is profound. Their self-worth is gonna go down with it and when your self-worth goes away, you become incredibly vulnerable to isolationism. So let's be more thoughtful in this space. There's incredible stuff going on, it's amazing. But there's a lot of money integrated into this and with money comes a lot of danger. We need thoughtful combos in this space and that's why I wanted to give that spiel right now. Thank you everyone, love all of you. from the wine world and like 70, 80, 90 year olds. Gary, can I speak to you for 15 minutes? And you know, they're the OGs that I grew up with. So I'm like, I got you, you know, Johnny. And then they spend the entire 13 minutes shitting on crypto. And I love it because I understand the essence of it, but I always end the same way. I'm like, kind of take the punches. And then I'm like, Johnny, how much cash do you have on you right now? I'm like, you do know that your grandfather said the same thing about credit cards. Like right. that's where history is a fucking son of a bitch. Go right. read the quotes from people interviewed in newspapers in the 60s about credit cards. Oh, dude, I've got one better for you. Want to hear something crazy? Listen Please. to this. This is a Please. true story. Well, Back in the day when they made the transition to canvas paintings, there were haters that came out because they said it's not permanent, it's not on the wall, it can be damaged. Everyone discounted canvas paintings and thought they were a cheaper knockoff than having something done permanent on a wall or a on structure. A wall. My so man, how, a so how crazy one. is that? Isn't it great? Because now by the way, what's by happening the way. with NFTs? Today was a good day. I enjoyed it. You know, typical 12 hours of passion. By the way, how does it feel for you to, to, to be an artist now? Do you think of yourself as an artist? You know, I used to always think of entrepreneurship as art. Like I, I really think being an entrepreneur is incredibly artistic. The tough part of being an artistic entrepreneur is the money part clouds it and it can look dark, but it's yeah. such a pure game of art. Yeah, yeah, the motivation for the person running it, if they're doing it well, they almost certainly don't just care about the money, right? Like, like, like I'm like, in a weird place where it's, it's outside collateral noise to the process. Yeah. I'm aware yeah. of it, I'm grateful for it. It's not like, I'm not demonizing it. Like I love it for people. For me, right. it's all about freedom, which I don't think yeah. is just predicated about money, but of course money is one of the pillars of freedom, depending on how one looks at the world. I just like being artistic. I fill in my pocket with legal tender, cost me to be the winner. Fly out before I can see the winner, no more TV dinners. It's call, call time, gang. Good to see all of you. V Friends Series 1 is my alpha pass. So I will continue to build on top of that in perpetuity. Series two, because I know we're right in the storm right now, so I want to give you guys as much info as I can. This is why you bought a Hangout Hawk. Series two is very special because this is how the world's gonna really know this legendary character, not my drawing. Series two was always planned to be very close to series one. The reason I, in the Discord, have been talking about series three being far out, it's because it's far out. Like, I know a lot of you do pay attention. I alluded to not having series two early, more to make sure that people like held on to their series one because I knew that would be in their best interest. But series two was always in play because I knew to build out the IP I had to create series two because the animations and the toys and the video games and the candies needed series two. It couldn't be built on series one. But series three is not happening next year. I want to inspire, educate, or nothing else, try to take risks that can help 
the beautiful faces in here because this community in here, this 2,700 person group doesn't understand how early we are. I can't believe how many people feel like they're competing with other projects. When I see Moonbirds go bananas, I have friends reach out to me and say, hey, are you upset about Moonbirds? It took so much liquidity out of the market for the Friends Series 2. I'm like, first of all, Kevin Rose is not only someone I admire, he's actually one of my truest dear friends, A. B, even if I didn't know him from Adam, no, nobody's winnings come out of my winnings. And we're all just starting. We need to build each other up. And so let's just talk some facts right now. People are talking about community in this space, but they're not acting that way. I crib on the side of the D. I let them think what they wanted cause bitch, I got bundles of bread and they bothering me. I've been up late in the lab just in case you was looking, that's where I'ma probably be. Make sure you thought about all of that shit that you saying before you done brought it to me. Brought all my soul to the masses as soon as I dropped out of class. Vlog, what's good? Headed to Wine Library, the original stomping grounds for the wine shopping spree. Woodchuck, right? It's going off of memory, uh, but I'm excited about it, so we're gonna go do that. I was gonna say something, I'm gonna wait till you get there because I wanna see if you do it. Okay. <laughs> that's funny. I can't wait to hear, see what that's about. Tell me when it's. Yeah, when yeah. we get there, I'll tell you. What do you do this snow video? Snow video is done right here. Right here. Shop this way. Show the snow video. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Wine Library TV. My dad is a piece of work. This is a classic Sasha special. Russian sardines. Sam, what's the strategy of Russian sardines in the most prime spot? <laughs> I can't fight, I'm over that. That just feel like overkill. Act like I ain't told you that. Every time I've been here with you, you always notice the placement of things and you're like, why is this here? <laughs> <laughs> so that was what you were saying? Yeah. It happened. It's still a real passion of mine. I'm such a retailer. Shining so hard they go see me in or no more TV dinners. All that I know is I know what I know and I gotta go learn what I don't. I've been up middle of night, got a new riddle to write. That's the life of an artist. Go you too pretty to fight. 2009, most influential people in Jersey. I made noise right away. Think about that. Like think about like in 09 like winning that honor, but like most people didn't even know who I was until five years ago. And that's like fucking 13 years ago. You know what I mean? It like takes time. People don't get it. I, I really do believe when you say you're just getting started. 100%. Basically that 2009 most influential people in New Jersey is how I feel about myself right now. Yeah. No matter what everybody thinks, I'm like, you don't get it. I like coming here just for history. It's cool, right? It is history. It's definitely my history. We're talking yesterday. We went to Wine Library for the wine shopping spree. Woodchuck, and the store is so different than when I was there, but there was a plaque hanging still outside one of the offices of me being 2009, New Jersey's 101 most influential people. And it was kind of, I just kind of reacted to the way Dustin reacted. I'm like, yeah, man, it takes time. Like, 2009, I get that little, like, micro local exactly. acknowledgement. That's 100,000 years ago. And, like, <laughs> nobody on earth knew who I was in 2009 in the scheme of things. And it's kind of like what I'm really spending time on with myself is it's obviously at a very different scale today, but God willing, like, it's going to be very different in 10 years. And so, like, it's just trying to, like, continue to be able to absorb it because it gets right. different every time. It's definitely at a real level now where it's like changed the way my life is on a day-to-day -day basis and then just trying to anticipate what that is 10 years from now. And then also trying to navigate, maybe it won't be as aggressive. It's already happened. My content as Gary B is quite down from a year ago because so much is going into developing the characters. I believe that emotional intelligence has now become the only variable in business success. That everything else is a commodity. That I can find a million people that know how to work in an Excel sheet and manage inventory. That I think I can find 400 billion people that understand how to run costs on product. Like that everything has become commoditized in a global economy except the ability to understand humanity. So we're on the boat, uh, I'm gonna do some fishing. Another uh, experience in the uh, VFriends Series 1 access tokens. Timing is deep in the Series 2 launch right now. See how it goes. Plenty of things I can go with this morning, but most of all I'm just gonna go with gratitude. What an incredible fuel 
for everything. I remember in my childhood, I would just be grateful every day that my parents didn't die. I was so scared of my parents dying when I was a kid. And so life was so simple. I didn't have shit, but I'm just happy my parents were around. And I think simplicity is such a superpower. And I think gratitude and simplicity in a relationship are profound. Right now, as you're watching this video this morning, you're worried about something at work or something with a neighbor or something financial. And it's really small in the scheme of actual life. It's definitely not something you're gonna care about when you're 88. So on this Friday morning, the simplicity of being grateful for the simple is the chat. Are you relatively good fisher? I'm one of the best of all time. It's a big fucking fish. Woo. Oh, it's Wow, look at that. Enormous topic of conversation, luck. You know, anybody who succeeds, there's incredible pushback, you got lucky. And a lot of people struggle with it. And by the way, me and my youth as well, because the sheer amount of work it actually takes, actual work ethic, execution, for someone to succeed in our society, it's incredibly difficult for that person to accept when people throw luck at them because they know the truth of their work ethic. However, as somebody who's worked very hard, eight human beings in Russia in 1970 decided an outlandish plan to get out of the Soviet Union by hijacking a plane and acting like they were going to a wedding, got caught by the KGB, luckily, Golda Meir in Israel and Franco in Spain decide to care about this singular event and creates enough pressure on the USSR that hasn't blinked at that point in 52 years to let Brezhnev say, you know what? Let's let out a couple of Jews, appease the world and we can continue on our path and I get to be one of those people. Changed everything. You have to be able to accept both sides of the coin. Hey everybody, this is uh, the end of this episode and the end of Weekly V. The team and I have decided it's just okay. And so we're gonna adjust and we'll go back to Daily V. We like the context, the speed, the output. It won't be, it'll be Daily V because it's a day in the life. It won't be Daily V from what you knew before where it was every day, always. Just not the reality of our world these days. But please leave some comments and let us know about your excitement of Daily V coming back, your thoughts on Weekly V, your thoughts on this episode. And we'll see you soon. Me mortal, immortal, immortal now.